one year ago here in Madison, Indiana, the Air National Guard hydroplane series was rocked by a wild crash in the final when Dave Billwock's boat hooked and was speared by Steve David. Both drivers climbed from the cockpit, but a rib injury took Steve David out of the championship race. What tale will be told in 2012? The first chapter is next on Fox Sports Net. Sportsnet presents the Air National Guard Series. Today, it's the 60-second running of the Indiana Governor's Cup in Madison, Indiana. Hi, everybody. Bill Weber along with Mike Allen. Thanks for having us in for the race. Start of the 2012 season for the Air National Guard Series, and there are plenty of big stories. New teams, new colors, and a new course here in Madison. But, Mike, none of those is the biggest story. Biggest story of the weekend, the two biggest drivers in the sport. Dave Vilwak and Steve David have combined to win the last five national championships, and they picked up right where they left off, qualifying 1-2 and both easily winning their first heats. Already this weekend, a glimpse of the future, a hint that this could be the most competitive season for the Air National Guard Series since this guy won the 2006 National Team Championship. Three big reasons. Number one, Scott Lidicote, 2011 Rookie of the Year, as well as winning the World Championship in Doha. He's with a team that's been in mothballs for the last four years, but believe me, they have the crew and the equipment to pull this off. Rookie Jimmy Shane takes over in the five. Very little unlimited experience, but plenty of racing experience. Jimmy is fast, fun, and flamboyant. And I know you like J.W. Myers and the new look Peters and May. A new team that struggled last year, but they began working on the 2012 season as soon as the checkered flag dropped in Doha last year. And it paid off with a close second place finish to Kip Brown in the first heat. And by the way, don't forget about Kip Brown and that 17 group. They're going to run for a championship as well. That's four big reasons. My math was never good. Yeah, I found that out when the check came at dinner last night. Time to get you up to speed. Here's a look at some of the earlier action. Start with Heat 1A, and this was a dance. A side-by-side -side battle between J.W. Myers and Kip Brown in the 17. Kip on the outside, J.W. on the inside, coming out of the final turn. Myers hit a hole, and Kip Brown raced on for the win, and 400 points in Heat 1A. J.W. Myers is a great driver, and he's a gentleman. Uh, we were decked to deck for three laps, and you know, everybody, I came in, and, and man, they told me that the crowd was screaming for us, and man, that's how it is here on the H1 Air National Guard Tour. So Kip starts the season with a win in Heat 1A. J.W. was second. John Zimmerman came home third. In 1B, another really good battle. This time it's Jimmy Shane in the five and Steve David in the hometown boat. The Alberto Miss Madison, number six. Steve had the inside lane and had Jimmy Shane covered with the horsepower to race on for his first victory in 2012. So 400 points for Steve David, but Jimmy Shane in his first ride with his new team, well, he looked like a superhero to them. We did say he was flamboyant, didn't we? Yeah, he's gonna be a lot of fun to watch this season. Scott Lidico came home third and Mark Evans fourth. In Heat 1C, a two-boat battle with Dave Billwock and Greg Hopp. And this one was all about Billwock in the spirit of Qatar. An outstanding heat for him, Hopp a distant second. So Dave Billwock off to a good start with 400 points. Mike Webster, J. Michael Kelly did not start. After the first round, Billwock and David lead the way. They were also the two fastest boats in qualifying. I'll tell you, it is hot here in Madison. We got back to the car yesterday afternoon, 113 degrees. Everybody trying to stay cool along the Ohio River. Want to welcome Nate Brown aboard our broadcast this year. He's owner and crew chief of the Miss Red Dot. And this year, he'll bring us his crew chief, Confidential. When you have triple digit temperatures like we do here in Madison, how do we get our boats to perform? Well, the number one most important thing is to keep the driver cool. We have a silver canopy reflector on the canopy to keep the sun out of the cockpit when the sun beats on it. We got the driver sitting in an air-conditioned truck, and we feed him water and everything else, so he's at the best he can be when he gets in that 125-degree cockpit. Also, we have a real consideration in air density. We have to monitor that. This helps us tune the boat to adjust our wings so we can get the most air under our boat possible. Also, it's really important to monitor the engine temperatures because the cooler we can keep the air going into the engine, the better off we are for horsepower. The fuel control has sense tubes on it. That's what these tubes here are. 
and the fuel control automatically measures the temperature of the air going into that. So we try to keep these cool here on the U-17. We also keep our fuel cool. We have an umbrella on our fuel, and this keeps the sun off of the fuel and it enables us to get the most density we can going through our fuel control and our restrictor. When all else fails, we have a bucket of water full of ice, and it feels so good. And that does feel good this weekend. Folks, going back in the water. Greg Hoff and everybody else going for a ride when we come back to Madison. The 2012 Air National Guard Hydroplane Series is brought to you by Air National Guard. Visit GoANG.com to learn more about exciting opportunities in your area. By Whispering Turbines, where life begins at 200 miles per hour. And by Peters and May. For professional management of your worldwide boat transport and logistics, remember Peters and May. Welcome back to Madison. At every H1 Air National Guard Series event, the driver's autograph session is one of the most popular features of the entire weekend. Plenty of time to get everything signed, get a chance to talk to the drivers. Every driver's there. It's a lot of fun. Get in line early, but it's worth the wait. The driver's autograph session at every Air National Guard event. As the field for Heat 2A leaves the dock, it includes a new team. Scott Liddicote is now driving for Degree Men and the Gregory family. Here's your unlimited access pass to this team as they make their return to the sport. I'm definitely proud to be part of this whole deal. The Gregory family and the Unilever degree sponsorship, I mean, it's a class act and uh, I mean, it's, it's looking good. The Gregory family was a fixture in unlimited racing for many years, but they left the sport after Kim Gregory passed away in 2008. Now, four years later, they're back. We owed something to the old man to uh, bring the old girl out and run her one more time. And leading right up to this weekend, we're just getting more and more, and more tuned up. When this thing's coming down the straightaway, uh -huh. which sponsor wants to come I up? can feel it. It lifts the outside one more. Really? Yep. I did figure something out, though, when I was out there in the heat race. If I, when I first come out of the corner, and it'll be easier if the wheel's right this time, but if I give it a little bit of right right away, it's kind of hopped up on that fin, and it gets going out of the corner fast. We knew we had some uh, learning curves to go through, and. Uh, Every time we go out, the boat's getting better, so two more heats to get it in the top four and get in the final. So, Matt, I'm wondering, why do they even have the clock here, dude? Because I can never find it. It's weird when you're down down here low. I mean, you can't really... You know, you're doing one of these, you look into the top of the lid. So. Yeah. It could just be me. <laughs> yeah, he's already working on it. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> New guys already. <laughs> First weekend. He's going to go out here and do what he does. He's a boat racer. Um, you know, the pressure falls squarely on the shoulder of this race team, and um, we, we have a lot of, uh, of things to really bring up to the table here and take care of Degree for Men and um, put this thing up front. Cruising up with everybody like you normally would, and then just bounce on it and go. Okay, all right, have fun. And in Heat 2A, Scott did have a lot of fun, although he started in the middle with J.W. Myers on the inside in the Peters in May, and Greg Hopp on the outside. It was Hopp taking the lead at the green flag, but as they charge into turn one, the 88 to three men with Scott Lidico moves in front, exits the turn, Myers still on his left hip, but then Scott able to move away down the back stretch. Winner last year in Doha, Qatar, and the Rookie of the Year. 400 points in Heat 2A. Myers was second, and Greg Hopp third. For more than 50 years, the Madison Regatta has been a sacred place for hydroplanes. And this weekend, some special racers took to the river. Here's Mike with more. Everyone is excited about the start of the 2012 Air National Guard Unlimited Hydroplane Series. And I am, too. I've won in the Unlimiteds, and we won the team championship in 2006. Driving an Unlimited is fun and challenging, but so is driving one of these, a vintage hydroplane. I've driven these too, and you want to talk about fun. It absolutely blows your mind. It really does, and I've only been doing this for seven years now. And every time you go out, it's a thrill. 
Well, I tell you, this is where everybody got their start that's driving these big ones, too. These, uh, what we call these hair dryers. It's great, really. Just come back, there's no pressure on you. You just, you know, we don't race. We go out putting an exhibition on. I have a good time, try not to break too much stuff. And uh, it's just really exciting to get out there in these open boats and have two or three guys on either side of you. And the sprays flying and the noise, you get out there and you get in the zone driving these things. I mean, it's just a lot of fun. There's an entire mix, a gamut that represents history. We have a whole grouping of uh, antique, classic, vintage race boats. And they range in classifications from F, which was stock, uh, all, all the way through to Grand Prix. You got everything here, you get a whole smorgasbord. Beautiful boats and many memories. Getting ready for heat 2B, Kip Brown trying to stay cool in the cockpit. Series getting underway in Madison, Indiana, first race of the 2012 season. Here's Heat 2B, three laps, four boats in each heat. And that's Jimmy Shane and the Graham Trucking approaching the one minute mark. And he might have been early to that buoy, and you can't cross that line before the one minute mark. You can't, Bill, and he looked very early. And as you can see, Jimmy pulled it back down, and uh, she looks like she went to ground idle. You can't get to that buoy before the one minute mark. If you do, it's an extra lap penalty. We've got the official word, Jimmy Shane was early, and that's gonna allow J. Michael Kelly to move all the way over and leapfrog those guys. And that's exactly what he did, Bill. Unfortunately, Jimmy Shane came up just a shade too early, had to back down before that one minute pin, and it allowed J. Michael to leapfrog him down the back straightaway. So he zooms down the back straightaway, gets a five boat length lead, and then moves over. Exactly right. Our GoPro onboard cameras, and there's J. Michael Kelly, and he's just happy to be out there anywhere. His team very late getting his boat in the water for this heat. But he is up and running in the inside lane. Jimmy Shane on his right in lane two. Peters and May countdown clock. In the left-hand corner of your screen. Coming to the green flag. Jimmy Shane in lane two will lead the boats across the starting line. There's John Zimmerman on the outside. He's carrying a ton of speed, Bill. We'll see what he'll be able to do with this when he gets down to the end of this first turn. J. Michael Kelly on the inside, then the grand trucking of Jimmy Shane. Wow, plenty of speed on the outside, Bill, but look what lane one and two does for you. It's the short way around. Kip Brown is the fourth driver in this heat. There's Shane. Remember, he's going to have to run an extra lap. And unfortunately by now, Bill, his, uh, his team has radioed in and told him he's got a one-lap penalty, so he's going to run extra hard just in case. He's out in front, but J. Michael Kelly is the race leader, on board with Kelly in the Beacon plumbing machine. At the same time, Bill, J. Michael Kelly wants to hear, hey, you're out front, don't worry about the boat on your outside, just play it safe. John Zimmerman in that white boat is second, the number nine, and Kip Brown right behind him runs in third. Don't forget on this boat, Bill, we got a couple of ex-Budweiser guys on the number nine team. On board here, the 17. There's the 37, the Beacon Plumbing. That's your race leader. He's got Jimmy Shane right alongside of him, but Shane has been penalized a lot. You notice one thing, Bill. J. Michael Kelly will get around these turns very, very fast, but then he starts to lose a little bit of lead in the straightaway here. Boat handles very well through the corners. It's always been a little bit shy on top end. What was your philosophy when you were racing a guy that really wasn't on the same lap with you? Well, <laughs> You had to make sure you weren't going to make any mistakes because he's still there. You're treating him like he's in first or second, but in reality, you're leading by a long way. John Zimmerman in the Holiday Inn Express runs second. Kip Brown in the Miss Red Dot is third. And there's a good look at Kip in his office. Yeah, pretty good look, Bill, and a pretty good boat ride. There's not a lot going on in there right now. Water's pretty calm right now. Tell you, it doesn't look like it, but he is working really hard trying to catch that boat for second. Wow, so much for being calm anymore, Bill. These guys are back in their own slop, and look, whoa. Wow. wow it looked like the nine almost came over on him. Now, I think he may have caught that right sponsor in the hole there. Kip had to do everything he could to avoid it. Look at that. That's a nice bit of driving by both those guys. But like a true driver, Kip didn't lift an inch. And Kip Brown takes over second place. On board the Miss Red Dot, coming to the checkered flag. And there is your race winner, J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Plumbing. 
second place to Kip Brown and third place to John Zimmerman. Pretty good for Jay Michael and that crew for almost not making the heat, Bill. I'll say. So 400 big points for J. Michael Kelly and 300 for Kip Brown. And this is the season opener for the H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Series. And we want to welcome back our series sponsor, the Air National Guard, their second year as name and title sponsor of the series. And as you can see, everybody's out meeting and greeting, taking their pictures, posting them on Facebook, and watching the flyover high above the Ohio River here in Madison, Indiana. Impressive in the air and on the ground. I want to take a minute to introduce you to Brigadier General John McGough, the Chief of Staff for the Indiana Air National Guard. Welcome to Madison, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having us. It's your first unlimited hydroplane race? It is. What a great opportunity to come down here to Madison and see this great race. Uh, you know, being a guy that has been in fighter planes, to see these uh, machines on the water is very cool. What is it then? To watch what's it like for you to watch them go around oh well i've got the opportunity to go up to the boats see that they have you know essentially almost jet engines on the back cockpits that are f-16s and then watch them do 200 miles an hour down the uh, straightaway here on the river it's just fantastic and i know you must be proud of the air national guard's involvement especially since we are in indiana here in madison absolutely as chief of staff the indiana air national guard we have 2,000 men and women who serve our country here out of indiana and we're very proud to be sponsors of the h1 series and we're glad to have you. Fans turning out in Madison, Indiana for the season opener. Let's check in with Mike. Jay Michael, not the way you wanted to start the race off this whole weekend, but this first place finish in your first heat has to make you happy. Oh, I mean, I can't say enough about the Beacon Plumbing guys. You know, it's been nonstop for these guys. And, you know, for them to get it ready two minutes before the heat, you know, that says a lot and come out on top. So, you know, even if we don't make the final today, you know, we got a heat win and, you know, you know, it's just, a, it's just the beginning. There is former series champion Steve David, ready to go racing in the hometown favorite when we return to the Ohio River in Madison, Indiana. It's really, really good. You want some? <laughs> it's a hungry and hot crowd here in historic Madison, Indiana. Historic's the word, Bill. Drivers absolutely love coming to this event. This is a town of about 12,000 people, and they're very proud of the Oberto Miss Madison boat. Why? Well, because it is owned by the people of Madison, Indiana, and they're very proud of their team and their drivers. So let's take our unlimited access pass and meet the hometown cast. Hot day, the crew works on the boat while the driver works the crowd. Every I mean, driver takes things a little bit different. Some like to stay in the motor home. Um, some like to just hang with their team. Um, I find that my butterflies get in formation if I'm out talking to fans and people so I can kind of put the focus elsewhere until I get in the cockpit. Hey, how are you doing, Opeachy? I sure do. Nice to see you again. This only happened in Madison. <laughs> and I can go over to our Alberta booth where we sell our souvenirs and get one-on-ones with those people. It creates that greater sense of equity. They get to know you uh, better. They end up becoming Facebook friends with you as well. Um, so we communicate off-season as well as during the season. Boy, well, watch out for this heat, man. Okay? Taking it very easy. Please, stay in the shade. Okay. For Crew Chief Mike Hansen, the morning is all about the details. I'm uh, always trying to figure out how to go a little bit faster is my big thing. You know, I got to try to squeeze a little bit more out of everything. A little bit more out of the motor, a little bit more out of the boat performance, a little bit more out of the propellers. So I'm always planning and scheming of what we're going to try to do next, try to go faster. But, okay, so you just tell me when you get there, now, I'll hit my watch, and then I'll hit it again when you get We'll talk about, you know, wing setup, prop, gear ratios, et cetera, to find out where we need to be. We'll uh, usually test the morning of the race, which we'll do today, uh, just to make sure that all those final changes worked, uh, fuel settings, uh, propeller wing settings, et cetera. You're not going to be able to run out the outside. This thing's set up for lane one or two. Tell me how long that red was that time, okay? Because I saw it. Well, you, what it was, you're out lane four. Yeah. Nobody else out there, smooth water. I mean, that's not going to be the case in racing conditions. Yeah. You're going to have three or four boats out there. You're going to have five minutes of milling around. So the water's not going to be what you just ran on okay. in that first lap or two, okay? That planning was for the morning's first race of the day, and it's focused on one target. Certainly the guitar boat and ourselves have been the top two boats for a number of years, so sooner or later you're going to meet, whether it's in a preliminary heat or a final. So it's actually better to meet in an early heat, see what both boats really have, and then we can make adjustments uh, if we do get heat uh, for what we need in the final. If we can actually beat them in a preliminary, we'll probably keep what we have in the setup. Our idea is we want to win the national championship. We want to win all the races, and in order to do it, you've got to beat them. So let's get it over with. Let's try to, try to face them up head-to-head, -head, and then it's just going to be hang on for three laps and go as fast as you can. 
And that's what we're gonna see here in Heat 2C. Steve David and Dave Gilwalk both in this heat. And just want to point out, one of the keys to success for the Madison team is the fact that Mike Hansen was a pretty good boat driver. I can't explain to you, Bill, how important that is. When Steve gets back, Mike knows exactly what he's talking about, and the two of them discuss it, and they give him exactly what he needs to go back out. You see our GoPro onboard cameras. That's Mike Webster in the 22. Mark Evans in the 57. He's on the far outside. Steve David in lane one, Bill Walk in lane two. The Peterson May countdown clock is at zero. We're racing in Madison. Look at that start, Bill. Steve David absolutely nailed that start. Bill Walk really dancing on those sponsors. Wow. These guys are airing it out pretty good here for a qualifier. Four boats, three laps in each of the preliminary heats. On board with Steve David. Now this course a little longer than last year. Get to build a lot of speed. A lot more speed, Bill. A lot more distance here in these straightaways. Turns are very similar. And we've got that extra hole in the back straightaway where we had it in a turn last year. It's a two-mile course on board with Bill Watt, trying to take the lead from Steve David as they head for the turn. Now, this is what Steve David was talking about. They want to match up against Bill Watt right off the get-go to find out what they need to do in a way of adjustments to make them more competitive down the road here. It's amazing the way these boats can hold that buoy line. It actually is. If you saw the size of that skid pin at about 300 pounds, you'd know why it's there. David, the race leader, here comes Bill Watt. Watch these guys here, Bill, and ho! Oh, Bill Watt just jumped out about two lanes. He's gonna lose a lot of ground on Steve David. So he hit a hole in the water there? That's exactly what it was. There's not much you can do. That turn pin skips out, and you're gonna go at least 20, 30 feet to the right. Saw how close he came to the shoreline there. Steve David able to take advantage of that situation. Lengthen his lead. They're so evenly matched, Bill. That one hop right there just took Dave Bill walk out of contention for the win on this heat. I'll tell you that when we saw Steve talking about being out with the fans, if he's not out on the water in the cockpit, he is amongst the fans almost all day long. Bill walk in second. It's on board with Steve David. Almost on cruise control here, Bill. Both of these guys uh, pretty much know where they stand after that first lap, and they're just gonna ride it out to the finish here. Bill Walk was the fastest qualifier. Steve David was second, and qualifying here on Friday was a blast. Those two boats going back and forth and back and forth until Bill Walk finally, just at the end of qualifying, took the top spot. There's Mike Webster in the 22. On board with him, he runs in the third spot. And right behind him, Mark Evans in the 57. On board with Mark, who's had a very busy week. He actually had his wisdom teeth removed this week. Oh, yes. And he and his girlfriend, Kathy, got married right here in Madison just before race weekend. So congratulations to them. And congratulations to Steve David with a win here in Heat 2C. Dave Billwalk in the spirit of Qatar comes home second. He gets 300 points, followed by Mike Webster, and Mark Evans. And take a look at the points after the first two rounds of heat competition. Steve David leads the way, followed by Dave Dillwalk. Remember, the top four drivers and points make the final. The fifth driver will be a trailer in the final. Time for the heat draw with General McGough doing the honors. 3A, six, 3B, one. So your top two drivers, the first two numbers drawn. Dave Vilwak and Steve David won't be going head to head, at least not until we get to the final. More action from Madison coming up. Well, those are the most popular guys in Madison, the Icemen. And see, a lot of those bags have the New Orleans Saints logo on them because it's been so hot in the Midwest, there wasn't enough ice to go around. They had to bring ice in, truck ice in from New Orleans for this race. I couldn't believe it, Bill. I asked around, and sure enough, that ice was coming all the way from New Orleans. That's amazing. Getting ready for 3A. The GoPro onboard cameras. The old boy Alberto Miss Madison with Steve David. There's a Graham trucking of Jimmy Shane. His first full year in an unlimited ride. Oh, there's a good look. Nice shot there. It's Kip Brown in the Miss Red Dot. Now on board with Kip. Peterson May countdown clock. Is it zero? Well, you can see there real quick, Bill, Jimmy thought he probably was gonna nail that clock, had to back off, and you can't just put your foot back into an unlimited. 
it's not like a carburetor you have on your car. You gotta wait for it to spool back up before you can get full speed. And it looks like Jimmy's in even more trouble through a rooster tail. He is, Bill. It doesn't look like it from here, but he's basically facing a fire hose and he has no idea where he's going. Has to wait for all the water to clear. Now trying to get back up to speed. And he falls to the back of the pack. Up front, Steve David. And Kip Brown on board with Kip. He has the inside lane. But man, that Alberto boat is fast. It is, Bill. It's very fast. And Steve can pretty much do what he needs to do from lane two or three right here. I love that shot. Well, maybe we spoke too soon. This red dot trying to rope in that boat. The Alberto Miss Madison with Steve David at the wheel. That's the hometown favorite. First lap for Steve, almost 139 miles an hour. They're flying almost literally on this cloud. That's what happens when you're out front, Bill. You've got nothing but clean water. You determine where you want to go. And Steve's taking full advantage of that right now. Kip Brown in that inside lane. 134.6 on his first lap. There's Jimmy Shane trying to make up ground in the Graham trucking. Now, I talk about Jimmy, his first lap, just 110 miles an hour after he went through that booster tail and basically had to come to a complete stop. There's Kip Brown running in second. And your race leader, Steve David. Making the turn, heading down the front stretch. Boy, a real smooth ride for David. Smooth ride, and listen to the fans. That's the boat that they own out front right now. 6.4 miles per hour for Steve David on lap two. And there you see his lead over Kip Brown. When he gets to the back stretch, he'll be able to move over. If he wants, he might be content in lane number two. Yeah, actually, uh, it's not a bad lane, Bill, because uh, if any mistakes were to take place, he's got a little bit of room to correct for error. Well, it's been a mistake-free day for him so far. 800 points, 400 in each of his first two beats, and he's looking to make it a three for three afternoon here in Madison. No doubt, Bill, the six team is looking to get into the final, but they also have that big picture in mind at the end of the year. Every point is worth something here. Yeah, you're right. We heard crew chief Mike Hansen talking about how they want to win another national championship. Checkered flag in the air for Steve David. And you hear the fans going, and it's not just for Steve. It's also for big John Humes. He's a part of this team for nearly 50 years, was the first African-American crew chief in the sport, a major contributor. He passed away during the offseason, and he is missed. Let's check in with Mike. If there was an award given out this weekend for the couple that traveled the farthest, this would be our winners. So what in the world got you guys here this weekend? Well, the, the Madison Regretta, we've, we've come all the way from Saudi Arabia to um, be here for this weekend because we recently got engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, I know my fiance absolutely loves these hydroplanes, so I just sort of said, well, where do you want to go? For our this is our engagement gift to each other. I was really keen on coming here, and uh, so my fiance was... Uh, Kind Very enough supportive. to uh, support me and come with me here. So what do you think of everything you've seen thus, thus far this weekend? It is definitely an amazing sport and uh, great organization. We've so far spent a really great time in Madison and this regatta event is probably um, a very big, yeah. very big highlight in our year, in our engagement year. So we will remember that for sure. There's Greg Hopp getting ready for the action. <laughs> This team racing with mixed emotions this weekend. The third member of our crew, Steve Montgomery, has their score. The owner of the boat behind us, Fred Leland, recently lost a long, courageous battle with cancer. Then we got the great news that he had arranged with his family for the team to go on. And that's what they're doing in a tribute season to their fallen leader. Now, driver Greg Hopp, explain the uniforms. Well, Fred Leland would never wear a uniform being an owner. He would always wear these plaid snap-up shirts and a... Uh, so we, uh, after he passed, we cleaned out his closet, brought him on the road with us, and we're all giving a tribute to the, the man, the myth, the legend, Fred Leland. Stripes and plaids with snaps up the front. A great tribute to one of the sport's all-time great owners. Well said, Steve. Thank you very much. Fred Leland was 74 years old when he passed away in May. He had 17 wins as an owner in the Unlimited Hydroplane Series. And Fred Leland will be missed both on the race course and off. That's the bridge that stretches over the Ohio River here in Madison. They're actually building a new bridge, and that's one reason the course has been shortened. It was a mile and two-thirds last year. It's two miles this year. Hopefully next year we'll get back to that long and lovely two-and-a-half-mile course. 
Here are the highlights from Heat 3B. Dave Billwalk out front. He's chased by Greg Hopp, and there's Mark Evans. Now, J. Michael Kelly came out of the pits, but the Beacon Plumbing went dead in the water, so he did not start this heat. This was all Billwalk, nearly 140 miles an hour on his first lap, and Dave with a smooth ride here in 3B to pick up the 400 points. Hopp came home second, and Evans finished third. Now let's see what's happening in the Air National Guard spotlight. I want to take just a couple of minutes to introduce you to Master Sergeant Chad Murphin from the 122nd Fighter Wing in Fort Wayne, Indiana, a 23-year veteran of the Air National Guard. But for you and your son, Dwight, your first ever visit to an unlimited hydroplane race, you're working with the Peters and May Group. How's your weekend been? Oh, it's been great. These people out here have been supportive of us, and they've shown us everything that we've had. Any questions on, it's been awesome. Now, you're an aircraft maintenance specialist. That means you look at planes before they go out and after they come back in? That is correct. We look them over every time they fly and in between flights, every day, all day long, and there's a whole crew behind us of 300 people that keep those things in the air. So you're kind of like the crew chief. Any similarities between how you work with your crew and how Crew Chief Scott Rainey works with his crew? Oh, it's real similar. These guys are professionals. They get on it as soon as they get bring it in. It takes about the same turn time, about 35, 40 minutes to return one of these, same as one of our aircraft. And Master Sergeant, I know you have one more special mission you want to accomplish while here in Madison. Uh, yes, I do. I'd like to uh, wish my daughter, Michelle, a happy 12th birthday. Thank you very much. Well, happy birthday, Michelle. Here's something everybody's checking out. It's the Air National Guard Rise to the Challenge. It's an interactive opportunity for everybody to get a quick glimpse at the variety of careers and opportunities that are, are available in the Air National Guard. And there was a lot of interest in this. A lot of interest, Bill, for two reasons. Number one, the Air National Guard has so much to offer. And number two, it's air conditioning. It was air conditioning. Hey, how many of those did you do? Four. Four? I think. And a shout out to the Skunk Hollow Yacht Club down in turn one. Owner Terry T.C. Cahall was nice enough to let us use his property to cover that portion of the newly configured race course. And we know they're having fun, and we'll have more fun from Madison in a moment. Time for Heat 3C, and we do mean heat, man. It is hot here in Madison, Indiana. Season opener for the Air National Guard Unlimited Hydroplane Series. Just a three-boat heat here. You see the Peterson May countdown clock. There's J.W. Myers and the Peters and May. He's on the inside. The degree men for Scott Liddicote. And Mike Webster on the outside in the 22, the Matrix machine. Everybody was good at the score-up buoy. And it looks like it's a legal start. Very good start by those first two drivers, Bill. They nailed the clock again. Here comes Webster on the outside, trying to make a run. Built up a lot of speed in that lane. Boy, three wide heading into the first turn. J.W. Myers on the inside. Lydico bouncing out a little bit. Able to hold his lane. Then Webster. Down the back stretch. On board with Scott Lydico in the degree men machine. This is an important heat, Bill. They are both trying to get into this final heat, and neither of them wants to be the trailer. 400 points for the winner. Side by side as they head for turn two. Watch the skid fin dig into the water. Well, you know, Bill, J-Dub has to trust these guys that are on his outside. He's done this all day long, and at 180 miles an hour, there's no room for error. Yeah, he was side by side with Kip Brown in uh, his earlier heat 1A. Same thing. Liddy Co. carrying new colors, the Degree Men sponsorship. The Gregory family this year. Some acceleration heading into the turn there, but J Dub staying right with him. Whoa, well, you see, there's another spot right there, Bill. That Sponson dug in just a little bit through those rollers, trying to take him to the inside. By the time he corrected, Scott was gone. Boy, oh, JW Myers really giving that boat a ride. I say gone, Bill, but he's right back in it again. And Mike, listen to these speeds. On the first lap, J.W. Myers, 138.7 miles per hour. Scott Lidico, 137.1 miles an hour. That's pretty quick, Bill. That means they're right on par with the six and the one in their respective heats. On board with Mike Webster, he runs in the third position. Second lap speeds. The 88 for Lidico, 137.9 miles per hour. J.W. lost a little bit down to 134.6, but still hanging right there in that inside lane. Scott giving him plenty of room on the inside. 
You know, with these onboard GoPro cameras, if you look at the sky, a lot of clouds moving into the area. There is a forecast for wind and rain later this afternoon. On board with Lydico. Starting to pull away. His first race in that boat after being Rookie of the Year in 2011, winning the race in Doha, Qatar, the World Championship. Yeah, this has to make uh, crew chief uh, Matt Gregory pretty happy to put this thing out front like this. KW still on the inside, but Lydico edging away. Checkered flag for Scott Liddicote and 400 points. That'll put him on the front row in the final. 137.6 miles an hour for Liddicote on that last lap. And a third place finish for Mike Webster, 225 points. So Liddicote gets the win. And we have our field for the final here in Madison. Steve David, Dave Vilwak, Scott Liddicote, and Kip Brown will all start on the front row. J.W. Myers will be the trailer. Skies are darkening, the wind really picking up, the water getting choppy. It could be a problem for the final. The 2012 Air National Guard Hydroplane Series has been brought to you by Air National Guard. Visit GoANG.com to learn more about exciting opportunities in your area. By Whispering Turbines, where life begins at 200 miles per hour. And by Peters and May. For professional management of your worldwide boat transport and logistics, remember Peters and May. 62nd running of the Indiana Governor's Cup. After a delay for weather, we're ready to go with the final, but the teams have had to adjust to the changing water conditions. No doubt, Bill. We talked to crew chiefs, we talked to drivers. You've seen anywhere from propeller changes to gearbox changes to strategy changes, how they're gonna play this whole start out, because this is going to be a rough final. And we have five boats on the water for the first time today. That, in addition to the wind, and look out. Alberto crew chief Mike Hansen didn't want to talk about his setup. He said the driver is the key. On this boat, the one for Dave Vilwak, a gearbox and propeller change for the final. For the 17 of Kip Brown, a rear wing change and a propeller change. For the 88 of Scott Lydico, he wanted the boat freed up a little bit. Wow, Bill, it's pretty freed up right now as he goes to the perimeter of the course. In fact, J.W. Myers, the trailer had to go outside the course because Lydico slid over so far. Green flag in the air, looks like a legal start. Dave Philwock in the spirit of Qatar and Lane 2 really flying that boat as they head into turn one. On board now with Philwock. Wow, and Vilwak unhooks the skid fin and skips out a lane. Now you can see on the sixth boat, the Madison Alberto, they're running their salt water scoop. Wow, Steve's boat really getting light. Now depending on who you ask, you get different answers about that. Some guys say they're doing it for balance. Other guys say they're running that now just to mess with the other teams. Either way, Bill, we'll never know. <laughs> There's your race leader, Dave Vilwak. In the spirit of Qatar, still in lane two, he's got Steve David on his inside. Got him on his inside. He's got to give him seven boat lengths before he can even think about coming over into lane one. 138.4 miles per hour for Bill Walk on the first lap. Oh, look at him air this thing out, Bill. There's your second place boat, Steve David. Now on board with Lydico, looking at Kip Brown in the Miss Red Dot. Now back at the degree men side by side for position. This is an uncomfortable spot for any driver, Bill. Rooster tail to the right, rooster tail to the left, and he goes through it. Kip Brown could not hold his lane, and he gets washed down. This is on board with J.W. Myers, and he is coming up on Brown's boat. Look how hard it is to, oh, there goes his bull nose, Bill. Went through rough water, tore up the front of the boat a little bit. Now back with a missed red dot. Kept trying to get it restarted. You said you have to be so patient here and under control. You do have to be patient and under control, Bill, but he did everything he could, and the boat's not upside down. So Kip Brown trying to get back into the action. There's your race leader, Dave Gilwalk, Spirit of Qatar. 135.9 miles per hour on his second lap. Good run for Vilwak. Steve David in the Alberto Miss Madison runs in second. Scott Lidicote, the green man, is your third place boat. J.W. Myers and Peters and May is fourth on the water, but he's acknowledging the fact he's been penalized a lap for going past the out-of-bounds marker coming to the green flag. 
on board with Kip Brown. He's back up to speed and running fourth. That's the front wing on his boat, and he controls that from the cockpit. Yeah, Bill, watch the front canard here. He's about mid-track. He's putting wing into it, making sure that front end stays down. Now, the faster he goes down this front straightaway, the more wing he's going to put into it to make sure it's there when he gets to the end of the straightaway. Now he's getting ready to set up for a turn as he starts to go into the corner. Now you'll see him raise that wing back up and try and pack air underneath the boat to get it around the corner as fast as he can. That wing is a driver's friend. Absolutely, Bill. You can win or lose with that wing. On board with Phil Watt. He's your race leader. Steve David in second. Bill, after last year, what's interesting is both of these guys are way off the pins in the corners. Nobody wants to take that chance like they did last year. Especially in this rough water when you have a tendency to see that boat bounce out a little bit. This is exactly what we're talking about right here, Bill. Look at the room Dave Billwalk has between himself and the inside buoys. He's got plenty of room for error here if that left Bonson wants to take a dip and bring the boat to the left. You see him putting a lap on Kip Brown. White flag in the air for Dave Billwalk in the spirit of Qatar. Two miles to go to the checkered flag. Gantsy down the front stretch, heading for turn one. Bill, you would think with the lead that he has, he would uh, be a little bit more conservative, but he's not at all. He loves to fly that boat, doesn't he? We saw that front wing on Kip's boat. Dave's a master at using that front wing. Dave's very good at the front wing. A lot of finesse involved in driving one of these things. J.W. Myers runs in fifth. There's Kip Brown, he scored fourth. There's your race leader on the back stretch one last time. Bill Watt trying to start 2012 with a win. Coming around the final turn. Dave Billwalk charges out of turn two, and he's going to start 2012 with a victory. Dave Billwalk wins the Indiana Governor's Cup in Madison. Steve David comes home second in the Alberto Miss Madison. And third place to Scott Liddicote in the degree men. Good start for that team. Very good start, Bill, for the first time out this year. So here's how the final heat went. Dave Billwalk with a really good start. Excellent start, but an uncharacteristic start by Steve David as he was just a little shy on the gun. Steve David had the inside lane and he battled Billwalk early, but as the laps went by, Billwalk pulled away in the spirit of guitar, flying that boat down the front stretch and celebrating with crew chief Danny Walters and company. Dave Billwalk wins the Indiana Governor's Cup. Steve David comes home second. Let's go down to the Air National Guard victory lane. All right, Dave, it's all about the start. <laughs> Tell us about it. It is. I mean, I left some on the table the other heat, and we got beat. And and this time, I hit the start right on. And, and the water's rough, and I knew it was going to be with all the boats out there. And so, you know, of course, Steve ran through a few, a few big waves, and it just stopped him, and we were able to get by. Then it was up to me to try to not hit another wave and stop again, just like I did last year. So on a hot afternoon, the hometown fans head home disappointed. Steve David comes home second. Steve, take us through what happened. Well, disappointed. We, we had, I think, the right setup. When it roughened up, being on the inside actually was somewhat of a disadvantage. I thought it would help us, but we were responsive heavy coming out of the turn, and Dave had momentum in lane two. Once you have momentum established, it's kind of like he's in second gear shifting to third. We're in third down shifting to two. That pretty much determined, again, do that first turn, really determined the whole race. So here are the National High Point standings after week one of the 2012 season. Bill Walk first, then David, and then Scott Lidico third. But for this team, it probably feels like a win. Scott, this team's been in mothballs for about four years, but this is a heck of a way to start the season. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had high expectations bringing them, coming here with Degree, Degree Men as a sponsor, and, uh, you know, we really wanted to do well first time out, but this is probably a little more than we were maybe expecting, but I'll take it. <laughs> I'll bet they will. Going to be a fun year. No doubt, Bill. Steve David, Dave Vilwalk up front like we expected, but we got two people knocking on the door. Jimmy Shane and Scott Liddycoat are looking to get their name up top as well. We're on our way to Detroit. For Mike Allen, Steve Montgomery, and everybody on the crew and around the course, I'm Bill Weber. Thanks for having us in for the race, and so long from Madison.